Hey guys, I'm off to go see Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Catching Up to Marvel, and <laughs> I gotta say, I am not feeling good about this one. Everything about the movie that we've seen so far has just led me to think that it's just gonna be terrible. But I need to maintain a positive attitude, because I've been wrong about movies before. But for the moment, allow me to read to you a list of things which I really hope which I really fear that the movie might do here. <laughs> 1. Make Batman paranoid beyond a rational thought. Yes, Batman is a very paranoid character, but he's also supposed to be rational. Oh no, there's a creature who might destroy the entire planet! But why hasn't he yet? I need to reserve judgment on this guy. 2. Give Batman more screen time than Superman. This is supposed to be a Superman sequel, after all, and yes, we are doing a lot of world-building with this movie, but since this is Batman and Superman, they should have equal amounts of screen time as opposed to just keeping the camera on Batman as, as much as possible, since, you know, he's the only profitable hero these days, isn't he? <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh my god. I really hope Jesse Eisenberg is a lot better in the movie than what we see in the trailers. This isn't Lex Luthor, he's just the Riddler. I love bringing people together. Ah! Oh, you should not pick a fight with this person. <laughs> you didn't sound like the, the Mad Hatter there, didn't I? <laughs> Let's see. Batman will wail on Superman, and Superman just takes it, and we're supposed to be cheering for Batman. I know the title is Batman vs. Superman, but does that really need to be the focus of the movie? These two inspirational figures fighting each other, and worst of all, Superman just laying down for Batman because Batman's the cool one. We're not supposed to be cheering for anybody in this equation. We're supposed to be horrified by the prospect of Batman and Superman fighting. This is like walking in on your parents fighting. Are we supposed to be cheering about that too? Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, and Nightwing won't have any bearing on the plot. It's so painfully obvious that DC is trying to catch up with Marvel right now, but all the names they've been throwing at us over the last year of who will be showing up in the movie, it's just... It's too much too soon. We're supposed to be world-building, not world-throwing it in your faces. Uh, I have this really, really terrible fear that the dialogue will be every bit as stupid as we see in the trailers. Do you bleed? If there's a 1% chance that he is our enemy, we have to take it as an absolute certainty. Batman is supposed to be a lot smarter than being this smug to a creature who can wipe out the entire planet by flicking his wrist a certain way. And I'm sorry, Bats, but you're going to go after Superman based on the whole 1% chance thing that he might be your enemy? Spoiler alert, everybody has a 1% chance of being your enemy. Are you going to destroy the entire Earth just because of that very flimsy line of reasoning? I don't think so. And if you do, you are nuts! Doomsday will be easily beaten within seconds of his introduction. Yeah, never mind that this thing killed Superman in the early 90s. Let's just make him a footnote so that Batman could look all the cooler. I heard somewhere that Doomsday will actually not be the big baddie that brings Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman together to defeat their common foe like we see so many times in movies like this. Doomsday is not the big bad guy in this movie? I sincerely hope that was just a rumor. Rumors come from all over the place. I really hope that didn't come from anywhere official. And my final thing, if my list will come up for me. Batman won't feel any remorse over the destruction caused by his fighting with Superman. The entire... The entire driving plot point behind this movie is Superman having to deal with the aftermath of Man of Steel. Not only does he kill somebody, but he... He's the one who causes, allegedly, millions of dollars worth of property damage. Although, look back at that movie, most of that was odd. And the planet uh, terraforming device thingy. Superman was in India while most of that was happening. 
leave soups alone. But mm, there's obviously a huge amount of collateral damage happening in this movie. All because Batman couldn't play nice with Superman. And I have this really terrible feeling he's not going to feel anything about what he's done to his world. Oh, it's all Superman's fault. You made me do this, Clark. You're the bad guy here because of Batman. So, yeah. Those are my biggest fears about Batman vs. Superman. But I need to go into it with a positive attitude in spite of my preconceptions of it. Because, as I pointed out a handful of times already on this show, I did go into Batman Begins thinking it was going to be awful. You have a huge name like Morgan Freeman playing a little tiny character like Lucius Fox. That says to me, oh no, the script is going to be terrible because they're distracting us with marquee value. The Batmobile looked terrible. It looked like it couldn't go faster than two miles per hour. You have uh, Rachel Ghoul as the main villain, and you have Liam Neeson cast in the movie, but you don't have him playing Rachel Ghoul? Dude, that is the most perfect casting you could ever think of! How do you not do that? You're casting some Asian guy as Rachel Ghoul? Why? No, Liam Neeson, man! Neeson! I had no idea who Christian Bale or Christopher Nolan were. I heard somewhere that Green Day might be a heavy influence on the soundtrack. Really? But I went in, saw the movie, and was completely blown away by it. And all I can do is just hope and pray that that happens with this movie. Well, so, yeah, I guess that's about it. I am off to go see the movie now, and I will tell you what I think in a few hours. See ya. It was awful. The main title was tiny and pushed into the bottom corner. It looked like it was embarrassed that it was here. That's encouraging. Batman kills people. He's reckless, he cares nothing about causing collateral damage, he straight up shoots and stabs people. And you see those batarangs that he brands into people in the teasers and trailers and all that? Those are specifically to mark pedophiles and child molesters. They're put away in prison with these little bat marks on them, ensuring that they're gonna get murdered by their fellow inmates. Yeah, Batman is using criminal subcultures in order to kill other criminals. Thanks, bats! I'm not saying that's not what they deserve, but it shouldn't be Batman who arranges it. Batman is written like he's the villain. If you took out any mention of Batman and just replaced his name with some other character, then yes, we would all be shouting boo for this guy because he's the villain! Do you bleed? I don't know, do you want cookie? If Superman is concerned with Batman violating civil liberties, why doesn't he just talk to the Gotham PD? The Bat Signal has been established. There's obviously some kind of a working relationship between Gotham PD and Batman. Lex Luthor is terrible in this. He's supposed to be a dark twist on the American dream, but instead he's just some yuppie who inherited his daddy's business. <laughs> he's supposed to be the world's greatest criminal mind, not a turtle having sex. <laughs> he hates Superman because he finds it offensive that gods might exist, whether they're currently being worshipped or not, and they didn't stop his dad from hitting him on occasion. That is stupid. My daddy hit me once or twice, so that means I had to hate Superman. His dad left him his entire company. Occasional hittings aside, it's obvious he loved him. People make mistakes. They never said that he was especially abusive. Maybe he just got drunk one night and it was a one-off. I don't know. We don't know anything about this character or how he got to where he is. <laughs> Wonder Woman is completely useless in this movie. You could easily edit her out completely and no one would notice. And she's hot for Bruce Wayne. Of course she is. Not everyone knows who Wonder Woman is, and her deal is never explained. We see her in a photograph from a hundred years ago, we see her using this magical glowing lasso, but not everyone is going to know what this means. What is happening here? Who is this woman? Oh, uh, and she's basically Catwoman from The Dark Knight Rises. She steals something from Bruce just so she can give it back to him. They made her Catwoman for some reason. The establishment of the other metahumans in the DC Universe is equally pointless and shamelessly transparent. They have no bearing on the plot whatsoever, and all that they're doing is showing the audience that, Oh, hey, we had a plan for them all along! No, you didn't! All that Jason Momoa's Aquaman did was kind of swim around through a shipwreck, may have been the Titanic, I don't know. Looking at some next corp security camera. I'm mysterious! Useless! 
Lex creates Doomsday by making a clone made out of his own blood and that of General Zod? How does that create Doomsday? Wouldn't that just make a Kryptonian of lesser strength? <laughs> and he somehow does this in the genetics lab of the crashed Kryptonian ship. How did that thing recognize him? Did the security systems they established in Man of Steel just not work anymore? By the way, Doomsday is also Parasite. Hooray! DC just ruins two birds with one stone. So what's next? A short, fat Joker who wears a top hat and carries an umbrella? At one point, there was a time traveler who may or may not have actually been a part of the movie because he appears in the dream that Bruce Wayne has. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Is he supposed to be Booster Gold? I don't know, because he doesn't look like him! Why is Lex so excited about pitting Batman and Superman against each other if he's not even there to watch the fight?! The greatest gladiatorial battle in all of history! Bye! <laughs> there are too many scenes and lines which just come directly out of the comic The Dark Knight Returns. If you wanted to make a Dark Knight Returns movie, Zack Snyder, JUST MAKE A DARK KNIGHT RETURNS MOVIE! Superman dies just so that Batman can unite the Seven. It's only because of the Batman that the Justice League exists! Oh, but it's okay, because Superman's not really dead. We slowly zoom in on his coffin at the very end. We see little bits of dirt rising above him. Oh no, he's just not dead. How? Why? Who knows? Who cares? He's back! The next movie to be released by Marvel is going to be Captain America Civil War which is going to be following the similar theme of heroes fighting each other. I don't even need to see anything more than the trailer to know that it is going to be way better than this movie. And no, this isn't coming from a Marvel fanboy, this is coming from a pissed off DC fanboy. There are only two good things about this movie. Jeremy Irons' as Alfred was awesome, and the advertising was so expository and so perfect that it left me with no surprises. I am very angry at this movie, but hey, at least I knew what was coming. This movie was terrible, I HIGHLY recommend you don't watch it yourselves, and this will be the first Batman-related media that I'm going to actively not buy once it comes out on DVD. Batman!